Hello. Good morning. There we are. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Is anybody there apart from me? Cool, these glasses are filthy. <laughs> Come on in, grab a seat. We're still in the woods. If you go down to the woods today, it's going to be great. I'm just smearing it around here, you know. <laughs> Come on in. I'm really looking forward to today. I think today we may even be able to start doing some inking. What's the weather like where you are today? Good morning. Come on in. Grab a seat. Bring your tea and coffee. It's very nice here. It's a little bit overcast. Crossed. A little bit overcast. Um, but yeah, all good. All good. It's all right, you know. One day at a time, isn't it? That's exactly the way to handle this situation. One day at a time. And my job today is to have the best day that I possibly can. Not worry about tomorrow or the day after. I got all despondent about Christmas. What's the point of worrying about Christmas? You know, because the kids maybe will not be able to come home and la-di-da-di-da. And I thought, why am I worrying about Christmas in July? Really? So, today is all I've got to think about. And then tomorrow, I'll deal with tomorrow. And that may sound a little bit short-sighted, but I think Christmas is a little bit optimistic to be having, making a plan for Christmas. Don't you agree? And suddenly there's no pressure because Christmas is months away. Same as a holiday, no holiday. It's all right. Got a lovely garden. We're very lucky. Yeah, there you go. Who cares? I, don't, I, had, I had enough holidays last year to last me a lifetime. So I'm a grateful camper in the shack shack. Come on in. We're down in the woods again today. We've done loads. I love this one. I really like this one. It's very close to my heart. Do you, do you find it's very close to you? It's, you, you can feel it. It's, it's up the road, isn't it? It's everywhere. Well, provided that the planners don't keep chomping up the bloody greenway. So many houses going up everywhere. Not sure about that. Affordable housing? Wow. If you're minted, you know, the houses that are going up around here, affordable for who? Because I think your average Joe could not afford these houses that are going up around here. I think what they've, 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 they've got like permission to do 150 odd houses around the back here. And I think there's a certain percentage, like three, <laughs> that have got to be affordable. So there'll be three shacks <laughs> in about all these million dollar homes. You want to live in them, don't you? Anyway, enough. We don't get political here. We don't get, do we? We don't, we don't bring it in here. Not in the shack shack, not in our sacred shack shack. And opinions are like noses. Everyone's got one. And everyone needs somewhere to live. I just wish that the affordable housing was a little bit more affordable, if that's what they're going to call it. That's all. So come on in. Stuart's in the house with us today. It's one minute to ten. Good morning, Stuart. Thank you for keeping us company too. If you have any questions, Stuart Shaman. And uh, always a good idea to sign up to the newsletter. Ask Stuart, he'll give you the information because then that way any digi downloads, any, any changes of plan, any shows, any offers, anything, any information, any crucial information will always come through the newsletters. It always does. So that's not a bad idea. Don't worry, we won't stalk you and we won't give your name to anybody else. Why would we do that? So let's have a look. One minute two and we're ready to rock and roll. Is the sound all right, Stuart? Loud and clear sounds great. I'm glad to hear it. Jim was here yesterday all afternoon giving me a bit of a, a lift. So the computers have all been updated. They do need it, don't they? We've got an external hard drive set up. I've got a little, a little mixer that's a little bit more sophisticated because we figured that we're going to be doing this for a little while longer yet, don't you? And it's all good. So we might as well get some comfy seats while we're doing it, eh? Get the comfy seats. Right, come on, let's get started because we want to make, today, we've got, we've got loads to do. We've got loads to do. There's no rush though, okay? No rush. 
and I think it'd be a good idea to keep it simple, you know. Afterwards, once we've learned the, the basics, then you can go off and you can add to your landscapes, to your triptychs, you can take, now you know how to make those frames. There are so many options, aren't there? So many options. I woke up this morning dreaming about, about the stamps and, oh, I thought, crikey, you could really, you could make some fantastic artwork once you've got those, those gnarled, twiggy, triptych kind of frames. Mm, really cool. Right, come on, let's get started. So what we're going to do, let's have a little recap of what we're doing at the moment. Look, we're really sticking to the plan. I find it usually helps. So there's your bit of copy paper for the uninitiated among you. Come on in, take a seat. You're in the right place. Where is a doodle in here? And this is our plan. This is our, what one calls a composition. <laughs> And it doesn't have to be, look, you can see, it is literally a sketch. And that gives me the layout. It gives me an idea of where we're going. So I can see, right, there's my, my triptych, un deux trois. That was our centerpiece. That's where we got started. And everything has been evolving from there, hasn't it? And we've done, if we look at where we, what we've done so far, it's very cool, isn't it? Look, see, so translate that into that. How nice is that? And we started with our toadstools. And <laughs> I was right. We all, I think, well, yeah, it's funny actually, because I thought if we make stamps, we're going to make these separate because you've got a lot more uh, versatility. And then everybody said the same thing. But in my head, and then I thought, I better not say it out loud because it sounds greedy. I would want both. And then most of you said, yeah, I'd want a cluster and I'd want them individual. And I thought, yeah, <laughs> there speaks the true craft up. <laughs> right so we did our curled ferns we did our oak leaves we did a butterfly we did our ivy our, our twisted ivy yesterday we did our uh, blackberries didn't we with our leaves and our our um <laughs> i've forgotten the word again not bristles thorns little tiny spiky thorns that's right <laughs> not stubble <laughs> right and then today I got up at the cracker sparrows because today I want to do the wishing well there's the wishing well and we want to put the landscape in see because if we look at this let's just take this now if we look at our tracing paper see so the landscape goes up through there and down there like that and over there as well around the back of the, so that's going to be nice. And then we're going to put a church, aren't we, in there. See? Oh, no, not on that level. Da, da, da. Church. There he is. Rotherfield, not Robertsbridge. Cool, you'd have to have some good eyesight if you could see Robertsbridge from up the road here. This is Rotherfield, the church. They says there's a lot of history there, so we have to go and look at it. And here is a wishing well in the woods. Okay. So I thought we'd have a look at how to draw a wishing well. You cool with that? Come on then. Right, so I don't need that one. Zoom. I need that one. That's the one I'm after. Because this is where the wishing well is going to go. So I drew it on a bit of terracing paper. And now I think we've decided where it's going to go. You see? Because these are going to come down here. But I was thinking that I probably want the, the well uh, to sit like maybe... Not that, not bang in the middle, that would look a bit weird. Like that. Do you see what I mean? I'm not sure yet. I'm still, that's, what, that's what's good about doing it on tracing paper. Because you can see. Let's come in a little bit closer so that we can see the wishing well a little bit better. Yeah? I had Dave the Builder in here earlier on. I said, what's the name of this? And what's the name of this? <laughs> so he's... I said, because I really like the way I've drawn this. And I said, these bits are the bits that make it look real, like old and authentic, doesn't it? And he said, yeah, they're called gallows brackets. Oh, well, that figures, right? And I said, okay then, smarty pants, what are these ones called? Because the way I've drawn it is, like, if that's the triangle, I've done it the way that Dave did the... Um, I do, I've done it the way that Dave did the the birdhouse, so that they go like that, see, so it goes up and then it goes, so what happens is, it's, it's quite easy, but they're like steps, but they're thinner, they're like wedges, see, like that, so that they don't, yeah, 
Anyway, I'll show you in a minute. And he said they're called feather edge boards. Feather edge boards. So that in other words, if you've got like a, 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 a roof and you don't want, you, you know, you, they go like that. See, and then that one lays under that one and that one lays under that one. So it looks like, so, so they go to a point. They're like triangles. You see? And they're called feather edge boards. Now you know the rest of the story. Right, and then I said, well, so, so would this be sandstone, Dave? Could we build a, a wishing well out of sandstone? He said, yeah, yeah, use the local sandstone. There's plenty of it around here. I said, that's good for me then. And I said, and what would you call this bit here? The handle that winds the bucket up and down. He said, the winding handle. And I thought, now you're taking the mickey. <laughs> okay. So now we know how it's constructed. Now we've deconstructed it. Now we'll build it again. You cool with this? Let's go for it. So I've decided that I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it really lightly. Let's get the angle right. I'm going to put it about there. I just want to check something out though. Just decide, like really lightly, sketch it so lightly. The bit I'm doing is the tri this bit, this triangle, and we'll build everything off that front triangle. Okay, so I'm going to put, what have I done here? Right, so the triangle, I'm going to put it there, like that. Let me just check so I don't go, it's going to be over that way a little bit further. All right, whatever. And then, this, and then the land, let's have a look. If I come in like that, so if that's the triangle, it's going to be like, yeah, 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 that'll do. Maybe you want to do this on a bit of scrap first, do you? Do I? <laughs> she said, does she? Do you know, I think she does. Now, oh, come on. Where's my rubber? I'm going to rub hole in the page, otherwise I can tell already. <laughs> no, I'm going for it. I'm going to go for it. I've already done it once. So the first thing I want to do is put a little triangle in, like so. Okay, and that is this triangle here. That's that bit. So that you, you understand what we're looking at is this triangle here. Right, so now I've done that, then what I want to do is we want to get an angle. So that, let's, let's put a little angle. This is where your sketching comes in, where you, you kind of, you don't, you don't put too many bold lines in. I'm going heavier than I would because I want you to see what I'm doing. Do you, do you understand? See, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting this triangle in and then I'm going to put these feather edge boards in down the side of the triangle. And what they are, if that's the edge like that, they're like that. So they come like that. Okay. So that's what they're going to look like. They almost come out. Let's, let's do it. Actually, forget that. As they come out, Right, because this is going to be more of an angle like that. As they come out, they're almost straight. Do you see? Like that. That looks better. Do you get it? Right, okay. So as it comes along here, it's going to come out like that. Right, there we are. That'll work. This is going to be quite a small one. Isn't it funny how you do it on in scrap and it works well? Do you find that? And then you go to do it in best and it's rubbish. Look, it looked brilliant when I did it this morning at five o'clock. And that's why I'm going to do it. <laughs> I know. What a teacher, eh? I'm not a teacher. There are no experts in this building. I'm going to do it on a piece of... No, come on, Grey. Get your act together. See, this is where I would use my... You see, because you've done it once well. Right. I'm going to take my... I don't want to mess it up. One, two, three. See? Then I'll put that down there. At least let me get the shape right. Right, you see, and then I can go through here. I just want to get it right before I get it wrong. Right, triangle. It's just about the triangle. If I get that right, then we're in with a shout. Okay. <laughs> like that. I could feel it was going wrong. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put these feather edge boards in and they're going to be like that. Right, that's more like it. They're hanging off the edge. Like that, like that. 
I bet you're already you're already on the the winding handle, you lot. Right, and then we're going to put that little bit in there as well, right at the top. Okay, so we've got that bit sorted, and now we're going to make a little the roof. Okay, so the roof is going to be quite short. We don't want it to be too long. It's only a little. It's not going to be a long. A great big. Right, so just get the, the angle right. It's all about the angle. Let's just get this right like that. Right, you'll see it in a minute. It'll come together. It's quite good. And then what we're going to do, you see, we're going to do this at this end as well. Right, because these are boards. They're not tiles. So as it comes along here, like this, it's going to join up there. See? And then that's going to join up there. And that's going to join up like so. Do you get it now? Right. See? And then we'll put that little one on the top, like so. It looks just like Dave's birdhouse. So it's like steps. One, two, three, four, zigzags. Look. Like that. And then we'll join them up. There. So we've got that bit down. That wasn't too hard, was it? I need to lie down in a dark room now. Right, sharpens pencil. <laughs> You're right. I know. When you feel that the teacher's floundering, you do lose your confidence, don't you? <laughs> All right. When in doubt, that's why here's one I did earlier. Look, it's lovely. Okay. So we've got our feather edge boards. We've got our roof. How long we got? Right. Now comes the good bit. So what we need to do now is this bit. So we're going to make a the, the supporting the oak. So let's do the one at the front first. It's about an inch long, I reckon. That'll do. Right, and it comes down from the middle. Just do it really lightly, because there's a lot more going on than just this. Make sure it's in the middle, otherwise it'll fall over. First gust of wind, it'll be on the floor. Right, so we'll do that. Don't worry about the back. We're going to get rid of that as well. Let's get this thing in first. Okay, so we've got that bit. The good bit is coming now, right? So hang on a minute. We'll just put, make this a little bit more earthy. Right, there you go. This is wood. It's all lovely and earthy. Right, it's going to be a great opportunity for, for, um, for shading. So if you look at this one, let's just... Should we have a look closer up? Let's have a look closer up so you can see it better. Right. There, see sort of halfway down, there's got to be something for the handle, right? Cool. So halfway down, make a little mark, because that'll be the, the, the wooden bit that goes around the outside, that's going to keep, it's like a collar, just pretend. So we're going to put a collar around there like that. I've got to get my eye in here. Right, that'll do. And then there's going to be a hole there, and then the, We'll sort that out in a minute. Right, down comes this post. Big old oak post. Don't worry about the bottom, because that's going to be covered in um, grass, isn't it? See? So we've got that. Now, the bit that makes it look like a proper old wishing well is these bits. As soon as I put these in, I thought, yeah, now we're getting there. So what we'll do is we'll bring the gallows brackets in, as Dave called them, like so. There. That was a bit ropey. Have you got a rubber? An eraser? <laughs> We've just had another shipment. <laughs> right, so hang on a minute, because on this side, we want to do something a bit different. Let me just get rid of that a minute. Do you want it a little bit three-dimensional? So we're going to bring this down here, and then this one is going to come to here, there, like that. Okay, see? Because it's in the... Yeah, there you go, like that. It's got a side, that bit. You see? Straight away, dimension. So you've got that bit. And then this comes... It can be a bit, bit taller than that. And that's why we sketch in pencil first, guys. Don't we? See? So that one comes in there like that. That'll look good when it's done. Right, you ready? How you doing? 
<laughs> I think, personally, this is the most difficult thing on the whole picture. For me, for me, I can, you probably got an extension, a balcony, but I'm no architect. So this is quite a challenge for me. But I like to stretch myself and I wanted to put a wishing well in the woods. Right, so we've got that bit. Yeah. So we've done that bit, we've done that, we've done that. And now we need to do the back end. This is the tricky bit. This is where you need to get your eye in really, because it's all about lines. So it's about the, the sort of the, the sketch. Let's just get it so that it's more or less going in the same way. Let's just get some lines going like that, that'll do. Let's not get too complicated. Right, so then this one's gonna come down like that. And this is going to come, this is going to be the base of that one, you see? And if that's in the middle, then you just got to think it through really. That's in the middle, so you, even if we, it's obliterated in a minute, because it will be with the, it's going to be invisible, isn't it? Because it's going to be, there's only that bit you're going to see, because in a minute we're going to have the, the actual well there. But you want to make sure that this one's in the right place, otherwise it will look weird. So that's like that. And then there's going to be the, the gallows bit. So just get that in as well. Just get it in sort of so that it looks in perspective. I think it's all about the perspective, isn't it? So just keep going. That'll do. Right, and then now, this is where we have to work out if that's the base. And then you're going to have the bit in the middle there, aren't you? It's going to be about there. Okay. So you're going to come round like that. Let's just see. It's going to be like, that's a bit big. This is the outside one, isn't it? Right, like so. Does that look right? Just do it until it looks right. You'll know when it looks right. This probably needs to come out a bit further. Oh, hello. This one needs to come out a little bit further. Just fiddle until it's ready. I had to fiddle for about five minutes until I was happy. And then, and then it suddenly just drops into place. And you, there, is no, there is no magic recipe to this. It's just, you're just gonna work it out. If that's the back of the thing, then it comes round, doesn't it? Like this. Let's have a think. Right, so the outside edge, see I did it brilliantly here. I know how it works. Right, so it comes round like so. This is the top now we're doing. And it comes round like that and then inside, let's get this bit ready, right, and then inside, it's quite a small hole, right, that's it. And you probably won't see too much of it on this side, enough. Right, that will do for now. And then if we build it, let's just build it first. Just make it, make the shape right. When you do that, does that look about right? Yeah, well, it was, it was built a long time ago, this one. <laughs> How you doing? Cool. I'm glad I did it before I got here. Otherwise, I'd make a right mess of it. Right, that will do for the moment. Now, let's have a look, because if we're going to make stone stones with it, we're going to make it out of stones. This is the cool bit. So it looks like a toilet seat at the moment. <laughs> could be that. It could be a long drop in the woods. <laughs> oh, here we go again. Right. No, it's not a long drop. It's a wishing well. Shut up, Barbara. All right. Okay, let's make it look a little bit more authentic. And what we're going to do now is get the old local sandstone going around the sides. That'll do. And we definitely need it to be offset, don't we? Like that. Otherwise, it'll all fall over. Right, and then we'll have another one around the side there as well. That'll be lovely. There you go. Now, this is where it starts to look a bit better. Can you see this all right? And now what we're going to do is bring this in like that so that it looks like it's coming into the center. There you go. What, who says? 
So that's one great big sandstone block. That's another great big sandstone block. And that's how they built this wishing well or watering hole. Yeah? We're happy with that. Could do with a little bit. It looks a bit weird. But I will get it right. And so will you. I might just knock it out a little bit there. Knock that side out a little bit. There you go. Okay, so then, so that then sits on there like that. I might have to change it a little bit, but you get it. And then we need, we need the handle. So out comes the handle. Right, there you go. Big old handle with a joint. And it's going to be quite, it can't be that thin because it would snap off as soon as you turned it. It's got a bit of, we could put a bit of chain down there, couldn't we? Make it look really authentic. There it goes. There's the chain down into the well. Boom. <sighs> I love it. Right. Not convinced about that end, but it looks pretty good to me. Gallows. There, it's not that different. Eh? How's yours look? Mine still looks a bit more like a long drop than a wash. Never mind. That'll do. And then by the time you've put in all the grass around the outside and here, because it's all going to be... There you go. And then you put a bit of grass around the back. Flick that through there. No one will ever know. Perfect. So then when you pan out, you see, because you're right on top of it. And this is what we crafters do. We always... We, we're so critical because we're looking, aren't we, all the time. Do you know what I think? i tell you what I think. I think that, that back's too high up. Humour me here is yours as well. That's why we're... I'm going to bring it down a bit and bring it round like that so it's thinner at the back so that that fella's there. Right, and we've got our... It already looks better. Look, if you, there's your chain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that has to, because it, how could you have an aerial view of the, you see what I mean? That needs to come up a little bit and that needs to come down a little bit. So it's more of a, an eclipse. That's better. Look, see, and it's thin around the back. So that's, doesn't that look better? There you go. Forget this great big thing. That's, they've just, streamlined the the support mechanism there right and now i've got it so this needed to be a lot thinner and this needs to be yeah when i do it with pen i'll make that even thinner there okay wishing well in place <laughs> how's yours is your wishing well in i wish i knew how to draw a wishing well well now you do it's okay. Just titivate until you're happy with it. I think that's it. I mean, there's no, there's no recipe, you know. Just work it out. Don't make it too complicated. Just keep going until you like it. And, and I think that's the way to do this. I do. I think you just keep fiddling until it drops into place and you go, yeah, that's about right. I like that now. See, I think that, that gallows is a bit dodgy too. But all the time that you're focusing on things like this, this is going to be lovely when it's done, when, you, when you're focusing on, on oak leaves or on ivy leaves or on wishing wells or butterflies, what you're not doing is worrying about stuff because you're, you're worrying about the wishing well. And that's okay. It's good. It's all good. So what we want to do now, we've done the wishing well. Have you done yours? Or you're gonna, you need to probably put yours in later, do you? Or did you take the bull by the horns and put it straight in? Good for you if you did. Right, now, what we're gonna do now, we've done that, is bring, we need to bring in our frame, don't we? So let's go from here. I'm gonna close it up. And also, what I've decided, let's have a look. I'm coming over this way a little bit. I'm gonna come down. I wanna keep it simple. Oh, I'm over a little bit further. That's okay. This is like, look, this is like the Channel Tunnel. <laughs> this is exactly like the Channel Tunnel. Spent five years getting there, and then, and then when they, 
they went to join and they couldn't find each other in the middle. Right, let's have a look. Down we go. We make these little gnarled bits like so. So we've got that one in place. See, this is wrong, yeah? So that comes down here like so. We're going to bring it over a little bit. Just move it. This is exactly what they had to do when they built the channel tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of that bit although that could be the other foot but let's just get this one in right that's it this is going to just be a big lump like that okay that looks better getting too complicated down there. right and then we'll bring this one down nice see and then if you want to later if you want to entwine or put ivy or honeysuckle then of course you can I just wanted to keep it simple because I wanted to concentrate on this that's thing. So this is the one coming down in between. All right, here we go. And then that one there, I'm going to bring that round the back of that one. Yeah, let's just bring that down the front here like so. So this is going to come round the back like that and then it's going to come up like so and round it goes. So it's a right old mosh there and then it's going to come through the back like so jiggle 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 nice and then that then yeah okay cool so what we could do now if we wanted to we could put this behind it might do you know what it might look better it might solve all my problems but then i lose all my lovely i lose all that don't i do you know what I mean? I've made a bit of a mess of this. It should be over there a little bit further. Or I can move the... God, do you wish you hadn't... Do you wish you hadn't, Barb? Yes, you do, don't you? See, because really, this needs to be on the inside, doesn't it? I hope you're not following me word for word here. Let's do the, let's do the landscape, and then we'll work it out as we go along. The good news is we're doing this all in pencil <laughs> let me change it right so i'm going to come through here like that right you ready so just make your line where you want it to be but you don't want to come in this bit so i'm going to come up like that and round up like that round the back of there and then i'm coming down underneath the butterfly and then i'm going to slightly incline towards heathfield right and then we come down here and the join, I want to make the church about there. So up we come here like so. And the hills, there we go, South Downs. Right, so that's where the, that's where the um, church is going to be. And I'm afraid, I think, I'm going to have to lose all this loveliness here to make this look logical. Because it's too far over. But watch how this changes. In the name of art, I'm going to turn this round like that. Sorts out all the problems that I had with my dimension as well. There you go. Boom. And straight away, now, actually, I think it looks better. It does. See? Just had to make the decision. Much better. Eh? I like that. I mean, if you were really crazy, you could always bring it back out here, couldn't you? Uh-huh. Anyway... So now the church is a piece of cake. The church is literally like that. The church spire. Are we cool with that one? Let's just do this. So what we're going to do is put a little flat bit and then a little balcony. It's just like a, like a cake. It's miles away. You can't see the windows. There's nothing to, there's no, the, de the detail is not there. Let's just do that. There you go. There's the church spire because the village of Rotherfield is tucked in behind these hills. Yeah. And then if you like, when you go to do your, your penning. I'm happy with that. There we are. So I've got my church in. I actually now I'm really glad that my, my church spire, um, my wishing wells tucked in like that. Don't you think? I think it's great. Because <laughs> it wasn't looking that great. And now it's ideal. Right. Okay. 
So, let me get rid of the lightweight. Let's get rid of that thing. And let's have a look. Right. Okay. I'm happy with that. I don't want to do any more for now because you can always put trees in and all that afterwards, can't you? But let's get the main thrust of this artwork. I'd like to start inking because we've got tomorrow to ink and we've got today to ink. Um, should we do that? And if, you, if you're if you into the inking, then we need our pens. Have you got your pens or have you got a biro? See, and then you can always add more detail afterwards, but the whole idea is that anything that's at the front now is definitely at the front. Any entwining, if you want to do any more, if you want to do any more twisted willow or all around here, uh, twisted ivy, then you might want to leave that section. But we're certainly, not, nothing's going to be in front of the toadstools. And so what we'll probably do is we'll draw, we'll ink it in the same sequence that we drew it in. Do you like it? I love it. See, and I, I'm quite happy to leave that open. I think sometimes you can overcook it, but that's just my opinion. I have a, I'm, I've got a big thing about less is more. Less is more. So I'm going to go with the number one. Number one. How did your church come out? Easy? It's a bit wonky. <laughs> it's all right, it's on a hill. <laughs> it's on a hill. That would be nice. That's got a nice flow to it. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Right, come on, cup of tea and then we're going to get inking. Give you a chance to finish your church spire and you wish him well. Maybe you put the wish well on a scrap and you're going to put it in later. Well, that doesn't matter at all. Provided that you make sure that you put the landscape in behind it, it'd be all right. We're not going to get to that bit. But I looked at the, I looked at the calendar and I thought, we can't spend a fortnight in the woods, really. Well, we could. But I'd like to get started, okay? So, pen, I'm going to use my Micron pen and I'm going with my number one. So get your, um, get your eye in, get your eye on, get your eyes on, get your eye in. Everybody happy? I can't see what you're saying. I hope you're not moaning. <laughs> I'm all over the place today. But that's because we're going like the, 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 the clappers. These, um, the Feditova stamps that we needed to do all the recording. So we've been up since stupid o'clock. Right, so what you want to do now is make sure that where you get to the white bits, you make, you don't, you don't go through it. So if you want the white bit on the, see if you want the white bit, then you're going to put that in first, aren't you? If you want it on the actual horizon, if you like, of your toadstool. That'll do. So let's just put these in now, and then that way, not going to go wrong. There you go, that makes sense, doesn't it? These are going to look so beautiful when they're penned. I know it. So we've got our, uh, this is the best bit. I love the penning, don't you? I love the penning because I can relax now. I've got myself a right old pressure headache because of that bl blinking, no, so bloody. I'm thinking wishing well. <laughs> it went really well this morning and then it went really wrong. Right, ready? Okay, let's go. Up we go. And wherever, just take your time. Smooth. And you can use those little white bits as a, as a resting place as you're going round, can't you? This is going to look good. Round we go. It's nice. Before Dave went off to work today, uh, he came in to see what I was up to, which is when he told me all the different names and that local sounds and that. And then he said, well, you know why they would have a because he's, he's brilliant like this. He said, you know why they would have a, a wishing well in the middle of the, a, a watering hole in the middle of the woods? I said, well, 
tell me, Dave. <laughs> he said, well, it would have been a settlement. He said, the woods that we, that we walk through, they're called lime kiln woods. So there were kilns there. And so there would have been settlers. There would have been people living in the woods. And that's why you've got an old well in the woods. And funny enough, you do see them, don't you? But I'm glad he explained to me why I thought I needed to put a well in the middle of the woods. I was going more down the fairy route, to be fair. <laughs> and I thought they more like a wishing well. But of course, ever practical. He said, well, no, not really, Bart. I thought, well, I don't know. Could be fairies. Oh, I love this. This is so relaxing, isn't it? Happy days. And the thing is, this is where if there's anything you want to change, now's your chance to change it, isn't it? If you want to go in a different direction with your... I'm going to give that a little bit of depth. That bit there. There we are. Nice. Um, do you have to concentrate though as well a little bit, don't you? This is going to be cool, very cool. There we are. Just take your time and enjoy the doodle because this is what it was all about. When we first started, I think I'm better off and make your artwork come to you. You know, in fact, I don't need a great big piece of copper paper. It's just distracting. I only need a little tiny scrap. That'll do. Look, I only need that. Sometimes, if the pen gets a bit, just realign it. We got to do is a little twist like that, and they'll last you for ages. Right, that's better. So let's go again. Slowly does it. Seems like ages since we did these, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel like ages ago? See if that camera's better. Have a look. Right. Doesn't it feel like I can get my head over the top now to get the... That's more like it. It just feels like ages ago since we did the toadstools at the beginning of the week. There we are. That's one. Next one. Right, make sure you've got all your divots, all your little white bits. So when Dave was talking about... Um, the settlement... See, we live in a really old house. It was a, built in about 16, 1600 and something. So... So it's been here for a very long time, obviously. And um, so have the woods. But what's interesting is, so they, the woods that we walk in, they're called lime, lime kiln woods. And, um, and what's interesting, obviously they used a lot of lime when they were building as well in those days. So a lot of our house is still the old the Watland door with the horse hair and the mud and and um, it's a lovely old building really it's just an old farmhouse it's nothing special it is special it's it's very special but it's not a mansion it's just an old farmhouse and um, we're very lucky to have it well, provided we keep paying the mortgage, we're allowed to keep living in it. That's what that, that sorry, I need to rephrase that. <laughs> right, now, let's just concentrate. I don't want to spoil this. This is the best of the toadstools. Right. But a couple of years ago, um, one of Mel's friends came over, because he's very interested in old houses. And he came over, and it was so interesting. He 
He told us things. He showed us things in our own house. Right? We had no idea. We had no idea of all the different um, the little secrets in the house. And the reason I mention it is because this is where my head took me earlier on. When you're talking about lime, okay, there's a, because there's loads of old oak beams in the house. And you know, you lie in bed and you look up and then there's a beautiful oak beam and then there's a great big white splodge on the oak. And I said to Dave, do you know, I mean, you'd think that they'd stain it or something if they were going to fill a hole. Why would they just leave it white like that? Why wouldn't they? He said, it's lime. I said, right. So when this fella came round, he said, those, those holes, because there's lots of it, that they filled with lime. He said they were very superstitious in those days. And they thought that evil spirits, like witches, they were right into the, the witch hunt, wasn't it? And they said, so he said that they, they were so superstitious that they felt that evil spirits could, could hide in these little holes in the wood, in the beams, in the house. So they used to fill all the holes with lime. So boom, I started walking around the house and there's little, they must have gone through bucket loads of it because it's everywhere, right? Doesn't that look pretty? So, so then he said, so that was interesting. So I, I immediately changed my attitude towards all this white, stuff all over the beams because then it made sense then see it's funny isn't it when you when you when you have something explained to you a little bit of education you completely change your 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 mindset about things don't you so then the next thing he showed us on all the doors because there's quite a few fireplaces as well like in the bedrooms and downstairs we've got big ingle not fireplaces in there and they've got these great big beams over them so he showed us the signs. Well, I'd never seen, in all the 10 years we've lived here, I've never seen these signs. Let me show you. So for example, um, he showed, it's, there are loads of these everywhere. If you look from above, you'll see it more. It's like that. There's those signs scratched. Because I thought, I'd seen the signs and I'd seen a lot of this as well. Look, like that. And then like that. And I thought, I thought it was a kid with a compass, you know, been <laughs> got, got, got locked in or got detention or wasn't allowed out. So just went at the beams with, and I thought vandals got no respect for their lovely old heritage homes, right? Because it is a listed building. So these are all over the place. And so are these, right? And I just thought, honestly, I thought it was a kid that had gone at it with a compass that had got the ump because he, was, he wasn't allowed out. Turns out, a circle is a witch's coven. And if you break the circle, again, these are symbols. And these atropaic marks, as they're called, they ward off evil spirits. So everywhere where there's an opening, like in a door, uh, a fireplace, fireplaces always open, you see. So these were all over the ingle nook. And this one here, same thing, because I thought it was a compass. This one is like Virgin Mary, look. There are V's and M's. There's other reasons for this as well, but I can only remember when he told us about the Virgin Mary. And he said, so, so, so they were such God-fearing people and they were so paranoid about witches and evil spirits that they, they, they engraved these marks all over any, any doors. And so he took us for a little tour around the house and I kid you not, every single door and every single... It was, it's covered, it's covered in these atropaic marks to ward off evil spirits. Interesting, huh? I'm going to do this one next. This is exactly how we drew it, wasn't it? Cool, it's, it's very relaxing, this is, because it's like the pressure's off. I really wanted to get to this so that then tomorrow we know we're coming in, we can hang out, we can drink coffee 
have a bit of banter and I haven't got to worry about the shape of the church spire or the wishing well. There you go, look. It's great. So that was another thing. So at the ingle nook, in the dining room, there's a beautiful old ingle nook. And, um, yeah, hang on, let me see if I can come in on that one and I can come over the top. Yeah. So there's a really beautiful old ingle nook. And, and on the side of the, it's, it's built with brick up the side. So this is about, I don't know, 450 years old, 460 years old, something like that. And he showed us it, and I, I'd never noticed it before. But on the right-hand side of the ingle nook, there's a brick that's really well worn. It's like red brick, and all the bricks are straight, right? All the bricks, they come in, there's the ingle nook like that. And all the bricks are like that, all the way along. And then you get to this one about here, which is about, yeah, about the logical height, if that's the floor. And then this one is, is really bowed in like that. It's like it's been worn away, right? So, so, so it's brick, 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 brick. And then this brick here, and there's a great big old, this is from a, a ship, a huge old oak, like from a ship. And then, and then the bricks go back to normal again. But this one is completely worn away. So your man says that's because they used to smoke all the food. This was the this was the main kitchen at the time. See the, the Victorians built an extension. That's our kitchen now. <clears throat> so this used to be where they cooked, and this was his favourite brick. He called it, and he said it's not uncommon to see this. Um, that's where he used to sharpen his knife. So if they had like a, a roast hanging or a joint or something in in the because they're big hooks up here under here. And he said, this is where he'd sharpen his knife on the stone. And that's why this one was completely worn away. I know. And I never knew it. And I'd really not even noticed it until he showed it to me. And then now you can see this brick has been completely worn away from being used as a sharpener. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It, it was quite a, an experience to have a man come to the house and he shared his knowledge so willingly it was lovely you know um but to have a man come to the house like that and and give you a tour of your own home and open your eyes you know and the more my mouth opened and my eyes must have been like saucers as he was showing us around the more the more he wanted to to show us, you know, it was so lovely. And um, he was a very nice man. Very, very nice man. And then I remember, oh, there was that was interesting as well, because there's a cellar to the house. And the thing is, though, the cellar, before the Victorians built the extension, which is now the kitchen and, and the pantry, if you like, the cellar was outside the house. Definitely, it was outside. So you'd go out the back door, which is now the din dining room, and and then there'd be the cellar. So, for example, does this interest you? Say, say, say the house is like that, right? The, the four hundred and fifty year old part. So that this is this. There's there's the fireplace with the warm brick. There's another big fireplace there. So, that, and then there's a the corridor there. So this used to be the whole house. And then the cellar was down here. So you'd come out of this door, which now goes into the kitchen, if you like, right? That, forget the kitchen, that wasn't there. So you'd come out of, there were only two rooms. There were two rooms like that. That was it. You come in the front door and you go out the back door. And there was a room to the left and a room to the right. And there were two rooms upstairs as well. Right. And the wasps are up in that top bedroom now. So... So you'd come out the back door and you'd come round here and you'd go down the steps, trickle, trickle, beautiful old stone steps, really worn away, come down. And this whole area here is a cellar. Get it? Not that bit, that's brick, but this is, this is the cellar. Okay, so he says to us, he says, I bet downstairs in the cellar, 
you've got recesses, like niches in the wall. I said, I've never noticed. Because you don't, do you? You don't. It was shel there's shelving in the cellar, so, you know. So he said, well, let's go and have a look, shall we? Down we go. And as we were going down, he said, there'll be three or four of them. I'm not sure about this. Oh, yeah, that's that one there. He said, there'll be three or four of them, these recesses. And they'll be about a foot deep and... And about a foot across, so a square foot, or yeah, in a hole in the sandstone, which is what the house is built of, that part of the house. I said, okay, so down we went. Does this interest you? It fascinates me. So down we went, and sure enough, there are these holes in the, um, in the cellar. And... And they were where the farmer, because remember it's a farm, he said bees were a very, very valuable commodity, a very precious commodity. And when it got cold in the winter, in back in the day when we used to have proper winters, he said they didn't want to lose their bees because they were a, a great source of income and sustenance. So he said, so what they used to do, they used to put the bee skeps and that's why as many bee skeps as they had, that's as many holes as they had in the, in the, how many niches they had, okay? And he said, and they'd put the bee skeps, when it got cold, they'd take the bee skeps, those, those woven bee homes, and they'd put them in the recesses, in the cellar, and then they'd put a sack, like a hessian sacking over the top to keep them warm and keep them inside so they didn't, fly away and that way they weren't in the house which was dangerous they just kept them in and safe in the cellar out the cold I know and we've got them in the cellar didn't know that didn't know that big education there's so much history in this country it's astounding isn't it right let's do the acorns and let's do the yeah, let's do the acorns and let's do the... the... Um, the oak leaves. <clears throat> but I bet a lots of you live in really interesting homes and interesting areas too, eh? I just... I love it. I love old houses. I do love old houses, don't you? I love architecture. Different buildings. Lots of oak in this old house. And of course, they used to build the houses from the from the what was around, you know. And clearly We've got loads of oaks around here. And uh, hence a lot of oak frame houses. Lots of oak frame houses in this region. Yeah, big shipbuilding industry as well down there. Lots of oak. Humans are very, very creative, really, aren't they? They're capable of so much. So much. Oh, which is what baffles me right now. I meant that in a positive light. They're so clever, really, what they can do. There. Yeah. Nice. When I go quiet like that, it's because my filter. I, I think, should I say that? Mm, probably not. <laughs> I keep my, um, you know, 
It's like I always say, opinions are like noses. Everyone's got one. And do you want to wear mine? Nah, probably not. So let's just stick to the woods and stick to the oak and stick to the facts, hey? That's the best thing to do, Gray. There we are. Isn't it easy once you've pen once you've penciled it to go back in and pen it? So nice. I love it. I love it. Let me just check what I'm doing. Right, so this is the twiggy thing. And then I think that brings us to a logical conclusion, really. That's the oak tree coming down. There we are. So we'll just finish this oak tree. And then I think what we'll do is we'll call it a day for today. Let me just make sure I don't mess that bit up. And then tomorrow we can carry on exactly, can't we? Can we do that? I'll leave that bit because there's lots of ferns and bits and pieces in there, right? But look, this is going to look magnificent, magnificent. I love it. I really, really like this. And do you know what? The longer I look at him, the better he looks. <laughs> so there we are. Little trip down, down that lane. That was quite interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, all the atropaic markings. I'll have another look around the house to see what else I can find. There's loads of it. You know, like where there were windows, but there aren't windows now. And I said, well, how do you know that these were openings? Well, they didn't have glass in those days. And he said, well, they, they, you can see where they used to put boards. There was a little recess in the stone where they'd put the boards in. And you could see the holes. He said, that's where they used to hang the sacking. So they obviously weren't worthy, wealthy. They were farmers. But it was just fascinating to live in a house where there's that much history. And it's got such a good energy. You know, it's got such a lovely energy, the home has. And, uh, and I think that's, it stays in the house, doesn't it? So yeah, I, 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 we're very grateful and we're very lucky. And um, yeah, and here we are in the middle of the 100 acre woods as well. You know, because that's where we are, the Ashdown Forest, in effect which is what, the, what they call Little Scotland. It's really like that. It's so much gorse and heather. It doesn't look like any English forest. It certainly doesn't look like Sherwood or one of those. It's just, it's like Scotland. It's really beautiful. So yeah, um, look it up. The Ashdown Forest, it's amazing. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like it belongs here. It's like you've entered a different, like a parallel world or something. Great, isn't it? Anyway, so I shall see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning and we'll just carry on where we left off and we'll just work our way round and we'll pen it and then we'll put some pencil shading in. Can we do that together? Because that's my pleasure. I really, that's, that's the bit that I can really enjoy. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Stuart, thank you so much for your help. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you at 10. Bye bye now. Have a great Thursday. Ciao. And just remember... It's only one day at a time. All you've got to worry about is Thursday. And then tomorrow we'll worry about Friday. Lots of love. Bye-bye now.